So JJ was running his last term. They, they, they began a battle for the soul of the NDC presidential slot after JJ had left. Now, these new fancy confederacy people were aware that if they didn't take hold of the success, that succession to Rawlings, that space would be occupied by the Cadets. The Cadets had a candidate. Their candidate was Augustus Guzitano. He was the candidate of the Cadets, for sure. And that was the Kojuchi Kata side of things. Now, these other people, the fancy confederacy people, they were looking to take over the place. So they thought that the running mate issue, the running mate position, was going to be an important position for them to fill. That if they could get their own running mate, that running mate could be catapulted to replace Flight Lieutenant Rawlings at the end of Rawlings' term in the year 2000. And that's how it was worked out, and that's how it became. Here is Kwame Nahoy telling us the most dramatic part of the Mills selection. Harry Sawyer was a minister of education, and he brought a memo to cabinet asking us to reverse the decision of the university council, you know, and appoint Professor Mills because he was much better. And he extolled his virtues. In the middle of it, somebody told him that in this constitution, the government doesn't appoint the vice chancellor, it's the university council, so it cannot be done. But he was very, very emotional about it. And the more he spoke about it, the more I said, ah. Obed Asamoah was in the meeting, but he left before the meeting ended. So as soon as the meeting ended, I dashed to his office. He was attorney general at the time. I said, Obed, it's Professor Mills that Harry Sawyer was talking about. Don't you think he's the person that we are looking for? Obed said, Jesus Christ, Kwamina, you are right. You know, he's brilliant. I taught him. Yes, yes, yes. Why hasn't the, anybody thought about him? So he called Rollins on phone. And they spoke in every, which I didn't understand. And then Jerry said, come there. I know the man. I have met him. He's IRS coming. Go to his house. Whatever it takes today, today, today. So you hear that. So that's how, that's how it was created. And if I get the photographs, I'll show you who they are. They are Howard Brothers, Guzzi, and all that, and I'll, I'll sort of say, 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 say the stuff about them. Okay, so that's Kwame Ahoy talking about how, okay, so this is the Ahoy Brothers. Let me just quickly do that. So uh, the oldest is uh, Uncle Ato Ahoy. Uh, that's him here. Uh, Uncle Ato Ahoy on the right-hand side of your screen. Is that what you have? Yes. And then uh, uh, Kwisi Ahoy is the next and Kwame Nahoy is the third. These are the Ahoy brothers, very formidable, very intelligent group of people, well-trained uh, group of people who became a backbone for the Rollins philosophy and a backbone for the NDC philosophy. On 29th anniversary of the event, I think that the NDC story cannot be written without the influence of the Ahoy brothers. Very, very influential. We can talk about the end and how Kwame Nahoy has written a book that didn't sit well with the majority of the NDC people at the time that he publishes. But these are people that when we are writing the NDC story, we cannot ignore them. The Ahoy brothers. So that's how Professor Mills came in. So Professor Mills was their own selection and they created Professor Mills to become the running mate uh, so that um, they will be able to seize the opportunity after JJ had left. So yes, JJ did leave uh, or JJ went to the election. Uh, that's Professor Mills. We have a lot to say about him tonight later on. Uh, so JJ um, won the election of 1996 and then he became, he was sworn in as president uh, for another four-year term. So we're focusing on the NDC story. So at this time, JJ is no longer going to be there. Ministers, everybody, business community is jostling around to find out who is going to be the next leader of the NDC after all. In those days, the MPP uh, was having some turmoil. Uh, so the controversies about uh, Nana Kufuado versus Kufu and all that. I want Guzitano's photo if you can get it, the JJ. Yeah, that's J.J. Rollins on your screen over there. He was now looking in the horizon as he is right now, and he was not going to be a leader of the, uh, of the he was not going to be president anymore. He cannot be in 2000, he cannot be on the ballot. The NDC is a powerful force. They had a majority in parliament, and they needed to fill the space. So the, the jostling had begun. This is the photograph I'm looking for, Guzi Tan. I'm going to talk about Guzi in a way that, that people can get it. So this man had been prepared to take over from Rollins. By the time the uh, NDC were beginning to find out that Ghanaians wanted democracy, the philosophy of uh, Captain Chikata and all of those people was that JJ, uh, 
we'll hand over to Guzi. So Guzi had been very well prepared, very well prepared in terms of his CV. He had been to represent Ghana at the Security Council. He had done international relations. He had been across the world, just getting prepared. And you know, in the communist world and the socialist world, that's how they prepare the people. Fidel Castro, Raul Castro, uh, in North Korea, they actually prepared their leaders very well. Guzi had undergone that kind of global preparation to make him ready to take over from Fly Lieutenant Rawlings. So by the calculation of that group of people, Guzi Tano was going to be on the NDC ballot in 2000 as the presidential candidate, young man, fresh blood, and win the election and smash out the MPP forever and ever. Because if the MPP loses a third election in 2000, really, nobody was going to take them serious. They lost 92, they lost 96. It was looking like NDC can never win an election. If you read Sam Jonas' book, he talks about how it looked like the MPP can never win the election. And so even when his brother convinced him that he should give Kufour some money, uh, he didn't want to give Kufour some money. I'm talking about Sam Jonah's book. It's there. I'll, I'll bring it to you one of these days. Sam Jonah wrote that he gave Mills some money, and he was not sure that the MPP was going to be able to win. Because at that time, the narrative was that the MPP cannot win the election. They can defeat NDC. That's how it looked like. 97, 98, 99, that's how it looked like that MPP can never defeat MPP in any, and NPP can never defeat, defeat NDC in any election. Guzi was the guy they thought about. Okay, let's move on with the story. So it didn't become. This was an event that punctuated the history of the NDC. The ramifications of that event continue till now. It was at an event in Swedru where Flight Lieutenant Rawlings had uh, gone to address a rally. And in addressing the rally, I think Kwame Nahoe captures it in his book. In addressing the rally, Rollins had been told that it is time for him to introduce a successor. So the successor was not going to be introduced by a Congress, a Congress conversation, uh, or a Congress voting like they do these days. The successor was going to be introduced by an anointing. JJ was supposed to anoint him as, as the next leader. And uh, JJ was sort of convinced at this crucial event in Swedru in 1998, towards the end of 1998. And he went out there and he announced that his vice president, Professor J.E.A. Mills, will become the next leader of the NDC. And everybody, constellations, the media carried it out. The masterminds who were behind this had achieved their aim. They had gotten their man named by Rollins to the whole world, to the whole public. Everybody was, had listened. That's where the agitations began. The cadres who had slaved for the party all this time and believed that Guzi, their leader, their man, was going to take over from Rollins and the cadres were going to take control of the backbone of the NDC, they were shattered because the masterminds, Kwame Nahoy, Totobi Kwachi, Kwesi Ahoy, they had designed this beautifully. They, they had a mastermind. They had masterminded this event and gotten J.J. Rawlings to announce Professor Mills ahead of everything, ahead of every preparation, to the shock of many of the NDC uh, rank and file, that J.E.A. Mills was going to be the, running, the, the candidate of the party. So that's J.E.A. Mills in your shock. So all of that started. And then J.E.A. Mills became the candidate of the party. He went into the 2000 election and he lost the 2000 election to uh, J.A. Kufour at the time. And before the 2000 election, uh, this announcement by Rawlings in the Swedru declaration was a big deal. Now, that announcement got Guzi Tano and others to leave the NDC. The first major breakaway from a major political party in the history of Ghana since independence was occasioned in the 29th history, year history of the NDC. It was Guzitano, Peter Podube, Chwechiro Poku, Mije Bano, Mr. Gariba. They and, the, and some of the rank and file broke away from the NDC and they announced that they have formed a new party. The party was called the National Reform Party and the National Reform Party was going to contest the 2000 election. And guess who the leader of the National Reform Party was? Augustus Guzi Tano. That's the story of the NDC. This, was, this story, ha, the ramifications of this story has not ended. As I go through, you see the story running through all the time. Professor Mills innocently comes in, he, no, through no fault of his, his people mastermind him and put him in, and then, bam, that's what happens. So NDC goes to the election, and the election is lost. Jay Kufour wins. Okay, it comes as a surprise to many Ghanaians that Jay Kufour has won uh, the election, so he wins it anyway. And then uh, Jay Kufour governs, so that's... We're jumping that because we're dealing with the NDC story. I'm not going to talk much about J.A. Kufour. J.A. Kufour governs, and then election 2004 come up. Uh, Professor Mills is a candidate again. 
Okay, so Guzitano is still not a member of the party. He's gone away. Treche Opoku is not a member of the party. He's gone away. Now, these names I mentioned, Guzi, Treche, Peter Podube, they were stalwarts of the National Democratic Congress. They were the people who managed the NDC's electoral victories. They were the people who were in charge of social mobilization of the young people. Peter Podube was in charge of national service. And those days, national service was a big deal because there were two streams of national service persons, those who had finished university and those who had finished the old sixth form. You finish sixth form before you go to university, you do one year national service. So all that group of people, 19 years to 20 years, millions of them were in the Putapodube's hands. And then their seniors, 24 years, 23 years, who had finished university, another million where Peter Podube was running the national service show. He was very powerful. David Kanye was his deputy. Guzi was their man. Chocho Poco and then Peter left the NDC. Very articulate man. And he left the NDC to form the Reform Party. He was a chairman of the Reform Party. Guzi Tano was the presidential candidate. Chocho Poco was the secretary of the Reform Party. Mijay Bano was their spokesperson. So I'll get their photographs for you next time. I think we're in a hurry. We couldn't get all these photographs. you see it next time. So Kufour comes in 2000 and wins the election, runs the show. 2004, Mills comes back. Okay. So I, have, I left one thing out. When Professor Mills became, and I'm, I'm give, leading to another strand of the NDC breakaway, I'm talking about Obed Asamoah uh, now. When Mills became the uh, candidate, his choice for running mate also became a contest. So the likes of Obed Asamoah and others who believed in the, the Reform Party or who sort of agreed or had friends with the Reform Party did not join the Reform Party because it's believed that Obed was sure that he will become Professor Mills' running mate. So Obed began to machinate. You know, Obed is also another mastermind. He began to design the system to become Professor Mills' running mate. As a reporter at the time, I was given a story that Obed Asama was going to be Mills' running mate. I put up the story that uh, Obed Asama was going to be Mills' running mate in the speculation that was being done then. I put up the story in November 2000. And in November 2000, that's what, how many years? 20 years ago. I did that story as a student journalist. I put the story up. I interviewed everybody who was concerned with Obed Asama, and Joy FM published the story in my newsroom. I won an award for that story in 2001 as a news reporter of the year because Professor Audrey Gadjepo, the award giver, was excited by the death of research I had done to come about that story. So I, I was hoping that Obed would be named the running mate because I'd done the story two months, two whole months to the time. I spoke to my news editor and they thought that it was too early and I said I'm sure that Obed was going to be. So they should allow me to do the story. I put the story out two whole months to the time. When the announcement came on a Sunday evening, it was Martin Amidu the special prosecutor. He had become the running mate to Professor Mills. And Professor Mills was not, uh, the, the Obed Asama was not happy with that. He was never happy with that. That's what began the thought about Obed Asama becoming chairman of the party and eventually leaving the party when he got angry. His first time of getting angry with the party is when the machinations of the other mastermind took him away from the list as Professor Mills' uh, running mate. And and uh, Martin Amidu became, became the, the running mate. Because in Kwame Nahoy's book, you will see that he said J.J. Rawlins had said that Obed should be the running mate. Professor Mills, uh, Ahoy talks about it in his book. Okay. <laughs>